secret. Uh, um, thank you very much for coming to this talk. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the, some discrete type Fourier restriction over some kind of surface. And actually, in my talk, it's actually the uh, torus. It's one-dimensional torus or d-dimensional torus. So the problem comes from um, the study of the uh, Schrodinger equation, nonlinear Schrodinger equation on torus. Uh, which means uh, if we consider the Schrodinger equation, la plus and x, um, u plus i uh, dt u plus u times u p, uh, to the power p minus 2 equals 0. <coughs> and also initial value, I would uh, write it as u naught of a function. Um, so here this, uh, so this is a classical um, Schrodinger equation. And with, uh, I say, x bar is uh, x1 to xd uh, in Td. So T is uh, a torus. So T is defined by r over z. Um, so um, you can say that the, the space variable is periodic, say, or it's 0, 1. Um, <clears throat> so now, uh, in order to solve this uh, Schrodinger equation, um, so this is the linear part, and this is the nonlinear part. If we, if we do not have the linear part, say without this nonlinear part, it would be uh, very simple. We can do the Fourier transforms. And so we can get um, uxt is e to the i t Laplacian and u not x. But with the nonlinear part, so we should put something else here. And um, uh, by Duhamel's principle, so one can write uh, there's i, and we have an extra integral from 0 to t, and e i t minus tau Laplacian u uh, u p minus 2 x tau d tau. So, um, so formally, you can write it this way, but obviously this equation does not solve the problem because you can see that you have like this ut on both sides. Right? Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll, uh, we'll define the right-hand side. So let's say, so they're equivalent. Right? Uh, so, we'll de uh, so we'll define the right-hand side to be an uh, operator t on u. So our aim is to find uh, u such that um, t u equals u. And this is, uh, so you can explain this u as a fixed point under this uh, uh, operator t. So one of the most uh, commonly used uh, theorems to deal with the uh, fixed point is the Banach fixed point theorem. So that's why we usually use that one. And, uh, and the whole procedure here is called a uh, uh, picard iteration. So um, to use the Banach fixed point theorem, we need to prove this t is an operator mapping from some space x to x. And also, it must be a contraction. Um, so again, the, the linear part is always easy to deal with. Um, you really can just bound this norm by the L2 norm of the initial value. But for the nonlinear part, uh, we need We need an a estimate called Straker type estimate. So let's go back to, so uh, let's forget about this torus here. So let's go back to the R case first. So if we consider the continuous case uh, when x is in R, so um, a Straker estimate is E i t Laplacian phi L p norm. And dx dt is bounded by some constant on the L2 norm of phi. Uh, this constant is independent of phi. Right. 
But unfortunately, if we uh, say we simply modify the R case and the, to the T case, so if we simply um, Let's just, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. This p should be uh, 2 times d plus 2 over d. And uh, d is the dimension. Yeah. So um, if we simply replace uh, the x by uh, td, then, then this claim is false. So let's say for t case. And this is not right. So, so in order to see this, um, Mm. Uh, we can explain it this way. Let's say uh, we can always expand this phi into some Fourier series. And uh, so therefore, if we uh, do the operation here, so e to i t Laplace and phi, uh, x bar would be just phi hat n. E i n dot x and e i n squared t for all n. So therefore, the left hand side would be this uh, exponential function, and the right hand side would just be the, since it's L2 norm, we have the Planchard, so it's only be the L2 norm of the uh, coefficients. So therefore, the, the Strickert estimate is equivalent to the following one. LP and TD plus one. I mean, if it were true, then it should be bounded by this. This L2 norm on the right hand side is the L2 norm of the function. But this is not true because uh, Bourguin in 1993, uh, in his paper, he pointed out that if we restrict, so if we pointed out in D equals one case, so if we restrict the range uh, for n, let's say uh, n bounded by some capital number n, and it's a n e i n x e i n square t. And here, uh, so since p is 2 times d plus 2 over d, then we can see that when d equals 1, then p is 6. This is larger than or equal to c time log n to the power 1 over 6 and the right-hand side. <coughs> so obviously, the right-hand side is not bounded because we can let n go to infinity. And even though log n grows very slow, it still uh, blows up. And also, when d equals 2, I think a counterexample is given by Takaoka and Trestov in 2011. Uh, sorry, what? You have a logarithm divergence on the right-hand side. Yes, so which means, but I, I, I let n to be bounded by capital N. So, right. so if n goes to infinity, then this one goes to infinity. So, so I cannot. When you go to two dimensions, when, uh, when you go to two dimensions, is there a similar logarithmic type of growth as, uh, as you have here? Uh, I forgot, but at least it's n to some epsilon. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, Oh, uh, for I think. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's uh, uh yeah, yeah, that's right. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, and. Uh, well, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, I say maybe I'll introduce another result about when a n equals one later. Um, so, so, so what we should expect here is we need to modify, um, try this one. Let's say, um, all right. So therefore, we need to modify this one. Uh, 
let's say uh, we let SDN to be a set N such that for all the N, the, each component is um, truncated by a capital N. And we say this is in SDN. And the right hand side, we would expect it to be a KP uh, DM. And of course, this, uh, this bound depends not only on the dimension D, the P, and also on N. So, um, <coughs> so uh, again, so all this work was done by Brogan before. Again, in 1993, uh, he proved that this KPDN is bounded by um, C and D over 2 minus D plus 2 over P plus some epsilon, when p is larger than or equal to 2 times d plus 4 over d. And we, we should call this number, say let's say p naught. Uh, that's the critical index, actually. So the most interesting case actually happens when p equals the critical index. If, we, you, if you can prove that in that case, it's just n to the epsilon. But I should emphasize that it's a 1993's result. And uh, when I started to do this work, and it's also the same result here. But last year, he improved this one to uh, d plus 3 over d, 2 times d plus 3 over d. So it's um, closer to the critical index in 2011. Um, But the conjecture here so the conjecture here is um, mm, this KPDN would be bounded by n d over 2 minus d plus 2 over p plus epsilon. Uh, as we said, when p larger than or equal to 2 times d plus 2 over d. And when p is between uh, these two, it should be a constant. So, so far, um, this conjecture is not uh, fully understood, u uh, when d equals 1. Oh, uh, our remark is that this epsilon should be able to remove uh, if uh, p is strictly larger than the critical index. Uh, let's say in d equals 1, uh, Bourguin proved um, uh, that k61n uh, is bounded by n to the epsilon. And uh, k uh, four one n is bounded by a constant. So this this one is just a uh, orthogonality. Uh, we just expanded. I uh, used the L two norm and orthogonality. And for this part, it reduces to uh, the uh, counting the number of divisors of uh, capital N. So it says n to the epsilon. Um, <coughs> but we don't know the five. So if this is bounded, we will assume that's bounded, but so far we don't know that. Um, a similar problem would be um, if we consider a KDV equation, we have the same thing. So if we consider the discrete type, uh, uh, sorry, if we consider the uh, KDV equation on torus, uh, it's uh, dTU plus dx cube u plus u times ux equals 0. And also the initial value is u naught x. So in this case, the stricter estimate would be uh, of this type, that's a n e i n x e i n cube t. And here's n, let's say, go from 1 to capital N, and L uh, p norm. If it's bounded by uh, k p n, 
and L2 norm of the coefficients. So uh, because the dimension is always 1, yeah, so we don't have the D1. Uh, so this Kpn is bounded by, I mean, it is conjectured to be bounded by n 1 half minus uh, 4 over p plus epsilon when p is larger than 8. Uh, 8 is the critical index. And it's, it's a constant. It should be a constant when p is less than 8 and larger than or equal to 2. Um, so, we, uh, so my advisor and I started from the, the Schrodinger case. And we found a different method. And we uh, recovered the Bourguin's result of this one, not this one. This one actually improves the result from below. But we did is the level set estimate. Um, and also, we gave a result of this one. Uh, of this one, we answered it affirmatively when p is larger than or equal to 14. But still, there is a gap in between. Uh, I would just say that in the KDV case, probably it's more, uh, it's more important if we want to solve the, the equation. There are three estimates are important. One is that k uh, when p equals uh, 4, and then k when p equals 6, and then uh, kpn when p is large. Or sometimes you can just use infinity. Right? So this three. And this one is bounded by n to the, uh, sorry, this one is bounded by constant. And this one is bounded by n to the epsilon. And this one is bounded by that. So the three one correspond to three uh, different uh, embedding theorems. For example, if you have this uh, result, then you should have the embedding that's x um, 1 half minus 4p plus epsilon is embedded into the L local um, p. So suppose you have the conjecture that should be p larger than or equal to 8. And I think I just stop here. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>